The Nobel Prize for Physics has gone to scientists Peter Higgs from Britain and Francois Engler from Belgium. They predicted the existence of the Higgs boson particle, known by others as the God particle, and have been recognised for contributing to our understanding of the origin of mass. And to explain the significance of the discovery, we're joined by Professor Ray Volkus. He's from the ARC Centre for Excellence and Particle Physics at the University of Melbourne. Good morning and thank you for joining us. My pleasure. And congratulations to well the international fraternity you must all be really celebrating this today. Yeah, we are. I mean, it's, it's a really major event, and particularly for the two gentlemen who, who shared in the prize and, and, and a lot of others uh, who uh, also contributed greatly uh, to both the theoretical prediction of the Higgs particle and also to its, to its experimental discovery. It's a real celebration of humanity's ability to understand the universe, I think. In 30 seconds... <laughs> You've got 30 seconds. We'll time you to explain the Higgs particle. <laughs> all right, there are two concepts, the Higgs field and the Higgs particle. So the Higgs field is a special kind of force field that, is, that it permeates the whole universe and it has the same strength everywhere in the universe. And when other particles travel through this field, they pick up mass by okay. interacting with the field. And it's a special kind of force field, one that we uh, haven't uh, known about before. Now, the Higgs particle is what happens when you put some energy into this field and you create waves or ripples uh, on this, on this uh, field. And through quantum mechanics, this uh, ripple manifests as a particle. 45 seconds, close enough. Okay. <laughs> and why is that so important? Well, because it explains the origin of, of the masses of particles like electrons. Electrons are, are, are inside atoms, and atoms couldn't exist without electrons, and atoms couldn't exist without electrons having mass. So to even explain why anything, anything exists in the way we know it, uh, we need these particles to have mass, and that's what this does. And how does that also help us understand the origins of the universe? What's the connection with that? Well, um, through, the, through the Big Bang model of cosmology, at very early times, all of these exotic particles, like the Higgs particle, uh, would have been uh, abundant in the, in the universe. And so to, when you trace back the uh, evolution of the universe to very early times, we have to take into account the fact that particles like this existed. Peter Higgs is a very interesting character. In fact, uh, he's taken a novel approach to, to winning this award. Uh, he, his um, spokesman says he's gone on holiday without a phone. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've heard he may not read email and stuff like that. He's, that is he's so really, cool and yeah, relaxed, I know, isn't it? I, I actually admire his, his approach to this. No, he, he's, he's bunging it on. He's, he's somewhere in a shack somewhere thinking, I wish I was there to celebrate. But he's been a bit reclusive. Well, not reclusive is probably the wrong word, but a bit overwhelmed by the publicity that surrounded him now for, for so many years. Yes, he's, he's a famously modest man. Uh, I've never met him, but I've listened to interviews with him, and uh, he, he's impressively modest and very fair to other people's contributions as well. Mm. Now, I, I understand that Stephen Hawking, uh, probably the, the, the world's best-known um, yeah. scientist, uh, has uh, congratulated the, the winners, but also had to concede that he's, uh, he's lost a bet along the way. He, um, um, he, took, he took a bet that they wouldn't be able to predict the existence of it. He's lost 100 bucks, I think. Yeah, well, he can afford to lose 100 <laughs> bucks, I think. <laughs> it's, uh, we've, had, we've discussed um, on this program before the, the, the Higgs boson and, and the importance of it, and also the significance of theoretical physics, which yes. we get beaten up on sometimes because you don't quite understand it. Yes. But the, the nature of it is that it has to be speculative. It has to be bold and brave in terms of, of, of where the ideas might take you in order to get to this sort of discovery ultimately. Right. Well, this is an excellent point. I mean, these guys have been waiting almost 50 years yeah. uh, for the prize, but, but also more importantly for the experimental discovery that was yeah. announced uh, last, uh, last July, uh, July 2012. Uh, that's almost 50 years. So this sort of research is long term. When they were writing these papers in 1964, I think they weren't imagining the Large Hadron Collider, this multi-billion dollar yeah. machine being built in, in Geneva just to find their particle. So it just it tells you something very, very profound about the nature of, of human inquiry, the nature of research and how you have to be patient. And, and do we have uh, the, the kind of support in place in Australia and overseas at the moment for that kind of, you know, broad thinking and blue sky research to, to go on and for that, that human inquiry to continue? Well, thankfully we do. Uh, I mean, we require good economies uh, so that we have the money uh, to perform these rather expensive experiments. Uh, we need the political will uh, to provide the money to do that. Um, uh, we need the interest to do it, and I think humanity is, is deeply interested in understanding the, uh, the nature of the universe and the origins of the universe and uh, the nature of matter and so on. 
Uh, so I think, uh, I, I think the prospects are very good for this, uh, for this kind of research continuing, and I think it's, it's essential for the spiritual development of humanity, if I may put it that way. <laughs> yeah, you, that, that's the whole thing. You absolutely, mate. <laughs> Professor, I just wonder what you make of this as well. There was a, a renaming competition of the Higgs boson <laughs> particle that was run by The Guardian in 2009, and it resulted in their science correspondent choosing the name the Champagne Bottle Boson as the best submission because the bottom of the champagne bottle is in the shape of the Higgs potential, also known as a... I think it's the, is it the bung at the, at the base of the bottle? And that's used as an illustration in, in physics lectures. Does that strike you as a, as a catchy enough phrase? Um, it may be a bit long, champagne bottle particle. I think I agree with you. <laughs> Maybe yeah. after a few champagnes at a, at a conference <laughs> we'll have difficulty saying it, I don't know. Hey, there's nothing wrong with Higgs boson. No, yeah, absolutely. It flies off the tongue. And what about God particle? What's your view on that? I think most people cringe a little bit. Um, uh, because I mean, you're in the realm of science. We, we, we are. And, and not theology. And it was kind of a joke. Uh, I mean, uh, it was actually originally supposed to be the goddamn particle because it, it was, <laughs> it was taking it. so long to find and then it had to be shortened. So. You got it. Yeah, That's perfect. it. That's the name of it. We love it. We'll stick with that. Really nice yeah. to meet you. And um, congratulations just, you know, by association. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good on you.